The third part is the higher self, the God self. That is the eternal life force that animates us and will continue to animate life yes. for eternity in different species, in different us ourselves. I don't know how it works, but it's the eternal force, the higher self. And it's invincible. It is God. It's part of God. It is untouchable. It cannot be diminished. It cannot be slighted. Mm. It cannot be offended. And that part never gets angry. It just cannot reach a state of angry because it cannot feel diminished. It sees the truth of everybody's actions, that everybody truly is the same as itself. And so it, it only can feel a sense of, you know, you know, that's unfortunate that this manifestation is not acting in accordance with its higher directive. And it's, but it's only capable of understanding and empathy and, and love. So it's not even capable of anger, the higher self. So what you have is you have this battle between the higher self and, and the physical self. And, and in between is the ego. And so all of these offenses you're saying are not actually happening to the higher self. You can't do anything to the higher self. Yes. The higher self is invincible. Yes. What are you going to do? It's an eternal. You die. It reincarnates. Goes up. I don't know how long it takes, but it goes up and reincarnates at some point, and it exists. It continues. It's not. It's not touchable, so it cannot. It cannot possibly feel anger, and that's why these okay, old hold stories. Okay, I want to stop you. I got to blow your mind because I know that you've <laughs> never read the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. I want to. I got to read this first. Hold on, I'm going to go get it. Do mm -hmm. you mind? Because mm -hmm. this is going to. This is awesome. No. Okay. Okay. So this is from Bhag the Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 2, and it starts at verse 22. It's talking about the soul. As a person puts on new garments, giving up old ones, the soul similarly accepts new material bodies, giving up the old and useless ones. The soul can never be cut to pieces by any weapon, nor burned by fire, nor moistened by water, nor withered by the wind. This individual soul is unbreakable and insoluble and can be neither burned nor dried, he is everlasting, present everywhere, unchangeable, immovable, and eternally the same. It is said that the soul is invisible, inconceivable, and uh, immutable. Knowing this, you should not grieve for the body. Exactly. That's awesome. That's really cool. You know, because most of what I get, I get from my own. No, uh, I know. That's what's <laughs> so cool so. is because you got that from taking... Ibogaine, yeah, and they probably got it from taking him again. Whatever, yeah, whatever they took, yeah, many, you know, yeah. many roads to the same truth. Yeah, but it is interesting because you could see this phenomena that happens where you, 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 it, it becomes obvious that there is this transcendent thing, and people, and you can come into contact with it, and there mm -hmm. is absolutely no need for religion any more than there's a need for psychedelics, or any more than that. There's just like you said, you can come to it and see it, and that's why I love studying the various religions. And talking with people like you because it's cool to hear these different ways that the thing is described. Yeah. It's so cool, but it's still the same. The same essence thing. is the same. So the soul, you're talking about the soul. Yeah, the soul. So, you know, as the Bhagavad Gita says, it's it's untouchable. So you and then so competing for the you know, the driver's seat in the body is the mind and the ego and and this higher self. And so when something really you know, that really tests you happens, it's very difficult to r maintain and leave the higher self in the driver's seat because the ego tries to identify with the animal. The ego thinks, I am all that exists. You know, it doesn't like to recognize that there is another, you know, higher part of you that's really the key part that's animating you. The ego has, it's like an organism itself. It wants to survive. So any of these slights, l the loss of property, the loss of body, the loss of you know, the diminishment that comes from your girlfriend cheating on you. Really, that is, it's all just damage to that part of you, the mind, the ego. Now, is it, it's real, it's significant, it sucks. You know, yeah. nobody says it doesn't suck. And it would take a real master not to get angry. But really, the only thing that's happening is a diminishment to what you feel about yourself. When you get cheated on, it's, I feel like I'm less of a man because she chose somebody else. Yes. And so that, that diminishes. But do you feel like less of a, of a soul? No, you don't feel like less of a soul. So, you know, in, in, unless it's an actual slight on your physical body, you know, on your actual survival, which should naturally trigger that primal instinct to fight. You know, I'm not saying don't ever fight. You know, I think there's a time for fighting, of course, too. But you have to be aware and at least be in control and know, is this a time to fight? Is this... Because if it's not a time to fight, 
then that anger is useless. But sometimes people wind up in a situation. <laughs> and by the way, I'm not doing the thing where I'm talking like people or I know someone. I, yeah. I do know. I actually do know someone who's going through. He's going through a really rough uh, thing in a relationship right now. And, um, and not me. I swear to God, you guys, I've told you everything about me. So I'm not going to like conceal something, but, um, it, it seems like the anger actually helped him push himself out of a really destructive relationship. And if it hadn't been there, if that anger hadn't been there, it hadn't inspired some form of reaction, he would have just ended up just getting fucked over and lied to for a long time. Yeah. And in that case, isn't anger good? Well, there's anger. Anger is going to change. It's going to change a circumstance. It's like putting a little, you know, it, it's going to switch uh, up what happens, right? right? So so sometimes that's going to happen and create a good result, especially when you're having a reliably bad result, you know? So presumably that could create a good result, but generally it's not the best way to do it. You know, the best way to do it would be to understand this is not serving my highest interest. Mm. This is not making me happy and send her away with, you know, best wishes and say, you know, I truly hope that you find your happiness so in that... hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the flames of hell, you yeah. bat creature. Go back down the <laughs> chimney, you you chupacabra. I, 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 and I fucking hear you, man. I mean, I'm talking like this. How do we write jokes if we don't get angry? <laughs> like, how would yeah. you do that? How are you going to come up with jokes, Aubrey? I mean, come on. This is the thing. It's, it gets... I, there's a lot of flavor. Anger is like a, like a spice. Yes. You know? It gets a lot of flavor to things. And the way, even the way I'm talking, it's not like I'm above anger and I never get angry. I get angry all the fucking time. You know, but I just know enough to be able to kind of release it and not let it be weighing on this constant because anger over a long period of time is the biggest problem that's what you know you can call that a grievance you know it's some kind of long-standing resentment that you're constantly you know measuring yourself against some long-standing diminishment these class of people have done this to me or this other country did this to me or this person my family did this and that's just really unhealthy that's insanity and also, I don't. I think what I'm talking about is insanity, and I do think what you're saying is actually right. I mean, if you're getting into some kind of battle, what with yourself or with someone else, obviously, it's the clear mind that's going to achieve mm-hmm. the the highest objective. Anger will cause mistakes. Yeah, and especially if you can't control it, you know, if you've not, if you, if it really takes you on this ride and you have no way to put on the brakes, it can be really bad. I remember the last time I got really angry. I, it happens to me when I'm at kind of tired and fatigued and I'm already concerned about other things. When I'm, when really, when that, that allows for me with the ego to really be driving the ship, you know, cause it has something to focus on. Oh, you're not feeling well. And it uh-huh. starts to really take over and I'm really disconnected. And, uh, it was, you know, about 18 months ago and I was recording a video and recording a video in my office. I have the door closed and everything keeps going wrong. Camera breaks, card failed. And I, and I was on like my fifth take, which is really annoying. I was already feeling shitty. And then someone came to the door and, you know, someone started knocking on my, on my door, right. in right as I'm about to wrap this thing up. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I was in a good mood, I would have just made the comment on the video, like, Oh, we got someone here at the door. Yes. You know, but because I was in already such a shitty mood and they just kept knocking and knocking. I was waiting for them to go away and they knocked for maybe 30, 45 seconds. Mm-hmm. And I just was just like, what? What, do you, what the fuck do you want? Blah, blah, blah. Who was, was it? Like, and it was, and it happened to be this really sweet, little, you know, girl from the front office who was, we just hired. And I come out like a, she, she, I come out like a bull, like, if you're not good, I don't answer, you know, don't. And then, you know, cause I just had this wave of, of emotion yes. that, that came out. I didn't know who it was. I wasn't directing yeah. it at anybody. Just kind of yelled out into the space, you know? Yeah. And, and then, you know, it turns out that she, it was her and I made her feel like really bad. Permanent damage. Yeah. She was like really sad. And then I saw that and I was like, that is really fucked up of me to have done that Uh, you know because i wasn't able to control that wave and you know i mean i can go back there's times where you just you just kind of lose it you get mad and uh, that was a good lesson for me to avoid that kind of thing can you do me a favor and give me your definition of forgiveness please 
<sighs> my definition of forgiveness. I mean, I think I think forgiveness is when you can love the part of yourself that committed the act and oh. and and love it fully in its imperfection without wanting to change it, without wanting to rewrite history or, or wow. just face it fully and, and love it and love the fact that you were imperfect at that time. But, you know, that was that was you and you're not that same person anymore, but still love it. That's so, so difficult to do. So difficult. All this shit is really difficult to do. On one level, it's incredibly difficult. But then when the way you were describing the soul and that, you know, I know that I know that thing that you're talking about. And it's so trippy to really let yourself not be in your ego for a second. And then I always realize, like, you know, I was I was thinking the other day, I wonder if this thing that we're in right now, this human incarnation, is actually something we paid for in some <laughs> other dimension. And we really don't want to ruin the show by getting too much into that idea of, like, what the the soul you know getting into yeah. that it's actually the thing that we think is enlightenment it's just ruining the movie it's like a big spoiler and so the whole point is stay in your role be that thing and don't slide out of your role because whenever i start you know going to that place or feeling it happening there is some part of me that's like no no yeah, do yeah. not expand what are you doing it's no fun out there it's all emptiness and spaciousness and it's like be a nice little curled up turd and <laughs> tremble on the sh banks of reality yeah you feel like you'll you feel like you'll lose the passion for the things of life yes is that true no it's not true i i don't think it is i think what i i think there was a concept that carlos castaneda put out and he said you know that the warrior uh and you know lives life in his controlled folly like he knows that it's not really fully real and that there's another more real consciousness and mm. existence out there. But you live in the controlled folly and you just, you do it for the hell of it. You choose a path with heart and you choose something that you enjoy and you do it for the hell of it. The problem is, is that when you're just this leaf on the, you know, at mercy of the wind or yeah. a bottle floating on a stream, you have no control. And this dream that we're in tends to turn into a nightmare. So having the control to be able to remove yourself and then have some direction where you go and then let all that go and still be in the moment of the controlled folly, as Carlos Castaneda said, yeah. or, or the dream that we're having, that I think is the best way to live. That's the way to ensure that you're going to not only enjoy everything just out of a passion of enjoying it and still you know, be able to control your fate, so to speak. Yeah, I know what you mean. Because you do, you do have to like watch out. You do have to watch out because you can end up being reactive and that that will lead you into weird predicaments. I, you know, I just, I started, you know, meditating more and more and more than I ever had. And, and uh, I, it really did start doing something. I don't know what was happening. It was doing something. But then I, I, as I stopped doing it or as I sort of like, Somewhere in there, I started thinking like, well, I don't know if this is what I'm supposed to be doing or if, it's, or if I'm just supposed to be myself mm -hmm. and, and like kind of what you're saying, like enjoy being that instead of, instead of constantly trying to induce a sort of peaceful state. I think you can certainly, I, I think that kind of monastic life where you're in a monastery and you're abstaining from sex and just focusing on consciousness, I think they are missing the point. I think there is a, there is a level where if you're not engaging in the human experience, you're blowing it. You know, you're going to get back and it's going to be like, yay, good job. You won the game that was really not the game. So We paid 600 back. bucks so you could <laughs> yeah. go to that interdimensional amusement <laughs> yeah. park and exist as a human idiot. You just yeah. laid on the couch and watched Walking Dead. <laughs> you were supposed to be fisting. <laughs> the only reason to be human is to fist. <laughs> when will they understand that? <laughs> yes. That's enlightenment. Uh-huh.